Hello, and welcome to Bird Bites, a program of the Coffin Museum in North Newton, Kansas. This is the program intended to pick your interest in birds when, perhaps, you are less able to get out and enjoy the outdoors. My name is Greg Friesen, and I'm glad to be able to share with you my passion for birds. Today, I want to talk about vultures, turkey vultures to be precise. This bird, often erroneously called a buzzard, has become more abundant locally in the past few years. One used to have to hunt to find them in Harvey County, but in the last five to ten years, they have taken up residence in North Newton, calling the tops of the grain elevator and the cell tower home for night. They leave for the day to do what all vultures do, and that is look for a meal. Others nest in the county and do not hang out in town at night. So what's with this bird? Vultures have a less than stellar reputation. When I was a student at Wichita State University, the parking situation was not good. Some students would sit in their cars for long periods of time in the parking lot, waiting for someone to abandon a good parking spot near Alberg Hall. These students were called vultures, and that was not a complimentary term. In another situation, we lost a roof to hail around 1990, and were met in the following weeks by a slick group of out-of-towners who offered great deals in roof repair. Once again, they were referred to as vultures. A brief look at the natural history of the turkey vulture will show how this description, though not fair to the bird, came about. Turkey vultures are summer residents of central Kansas. They arrive in March and leave in early September, spending winter in the southeast United States and Central and South America. Occasional birds can be found in Kansas in the winter, but this is not common. The bird is identified by its black plumage with lighter coloring on the underside of the primary or outer feathers in flight. The bird in flight forms what is called a dihedral, with the wings folded up slightly from the horizontal plane of the soaring bird. The head in adults is red and bald, and black and bald in young. Feathers are not something you want in your head if your idea of a good meal is sticking your head into a ripe and rotting dead animal. And that is indeed the dietary pattern of the turkey vulture. They spend days soaring high on updrafts and air currents with a keen eye for food, dead food to be specific. Vultures are the scavengers of the bird world. With few exceptions, if you are a vulture, you like your food long dead. Turkey vultures find their food both by sight and smell. They often have to eat the food where found as their feet are not strong enough to carry it far. In fact, the birds often cannot break into a carcass of a dead animal till it is rotted sufficiently to cause the body to break down. If hungry enough to try and eat a meal before its time, the bird tears into an opening in a carcass such as the mouth or anus. Now that's not what I would do, but I'm not a vulture. Turkey vultures nest throughout the state of Kansas, and indeed throughout the lower 48 states. They are thought to mate for life, though this is not fully documented. The bird is opportunistic in selecting a nest site, with nests found in caves, recesses in cliffs, thickets, and even old buildings. Once while doing a breeding survey, of birds, I was directed to a nest in an old abandoned house in Butler County. I found another nest once in a recess under a rock ledge in the Smoky Hills. My brother Calvin once had an encounter with a turkey vulture on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Approaching the bird at a fast speed, the bird barely had time to take off, and in doing so, emptied its stomach contents onto his otherwise nice car. This is a rather unique activity to vultures. When threatened, without strong legs or beaks, the bird relies on forceful regurgitation, more commonly known as projectile vomiting, for defense, with the ability to spew putrefied and partially digested stomach contents up to 10 feet. This is, per the literature, an effective deterrent to most animals. This is one reason why I often do not search out the nests of turkey vultures. Finally, don't expect to hear vultures calling or singing. They lack a vocal organ and are left only with hisses, grunts, and in some cases stomping of their feet to make a point. Do know that in recent years another vulture species, the black vulture, has entered the state. 
This cousin of the turkey vulture has a black head, shorter and blunter wings, and needs more of an updraft to stay afloat. In short, it's the bird of warmer environments and stronger updrafts, and has been noted by some to be more aggressive toward even living prey. What brings it to the state? Well, maybe warmer weather and stronger updrafts. So how about that negative perception of turkey vultures? A world without them would be a world full of dead and bloating animals, waiting for insects and bacteria to rid our lives of offensive and rotting carcasses. This world would definitely be a worse place without the bird. I would suggest that we use the term vulture in a positive manner. How about those people who stay to clean up after a potluck, or even my long-suffering grade school janitor who, after some poor classmate lost his school lunch, entered the room with the odd-smelling compound that allowed for the safe and effective removal of the offending product. These people are the wonderful vultures of our lives, and do justice to the turkey vulture, a unique and necessary part of our world. Thanks for listening, and good birding.